if there's anything you should take away from this game, and there's a lot, is that the combat looks absolutely amazing. Let's talk about it. The first thing to really notice about this game is its speed. In the first clip, we see how the player is able to quickly get to cover upon first contact. I don't need to tell you why this is important, but in any combat scenario, your ability to make quick decisions at any given time should be the difference between success and failure. Fortunately, that's illustrated here, as your character is able to get to cover quickly in a short amount of time to avoid taking damage. But I don't want you to think speed in this game is a defensive maneuver or mechanism. In fact, far from it, speed allows you to take the initiative and be aggressive when facing multiple different opponents. It lets you get up close and personal, embracing the conflict which leads to you changing the way you interact with the enemies and the environment. The perfect example of offense being the best defense. And we can see that here as the player is able to bomb rush multiple different opponents continuously. The aggressive nature gives your enemies less time to react and think as you're able to maneuver around objects and hit corners efficiently. It doesn't just look good on screen, I can almost promise it'll feel just as good. So the foundation of the gameplay is based on speed, but that by itself isn't enough to make the combat exceptional. It's going to be everything that surrounds that foundation that takes it to the next level. So let's talk about the pillars holding the combat together. Let's talk pillars. One of the pillars in this game from what I can see is the environment and how you interact with it. I mentioned upon initial contact your character was able to use speed to get to protection. But if you look at the layout of the terrain, there's multiple different forms of cover on display. The game is clearly trying to engage your mind a bit as it's giving you multiple different avenues in how you approach the enemy. It's not striving to be your typical run and gun shooter. It's aiming to be more tactful and realistic. If you choose to avoid using their terrain or its cover based system, then expect defeat on a regular basis. Another great thing about this system is, it allows you to plan ahead and adapt to the changing circumstances of a battlefield. If a new enemy approaches with a weapon that may be detrimental to your playstyle, retreating on the spot becomes an option. How about flanking that enemy with one of your companions, giving you the ability to target it from behind as you go from cover to cover? Or how about taking out the weaker enemies in short bursts of aggression, leaving just you and your new adversary? And that's the key thing here. The environment gives you a wide range of variety in the way you initiate and commence combat. But it doesn't stop there. When entering into a building, you're presented with smaller enclosed environments which limits your ability to retreat and approach. As a result, you can argue battles in here aren't in your favor, but you would be wrong. Switching to the right weapons such as a shotgun, pistols or using melee attacks such as an axe could give you a significant advantage when you get up close and personal. And before getting up close and personal, grenades in a small closed environment have the ability to take out multiple different opponents in one go. And let's not forget the exploding barrels and liquid nitrogen which causes massive damage on impact, a short tool to use in a smaller setting. Another important thing to note here is, these encounters may be extremely close like the corridor setting and then open up a little bit more, but we also have closed environments that have high points with multiple different floors. Again. This changes the way you play and approach as you use your jetpack to get to the first, second, third and fourth floor. And speaking of jetpacks, let's talk about movement. The second pillar, movement. Movement is probably the most important pillar and I say that's because the ability to dash and use jetpacks makes the gameplay a lot more interesting and dynamic as each encounter can be tackled in multiple different ways, such as being able to take to the skies and drop bombs on unsuspecting enemies. Or how about being able to close the distance on enemies from afar, or being able to reach an advantage point to take out everyone, one by one. Gravity. gravity Now one thing that can affect your movement, speed and how you interact with the environment is gravity. In some instances, you'll find your guns pushing you back, forcing you to switch to a different type of weapon to balance it out. The efficiency of covers will also be greatly reduced as enemies hover and float towards you, affecting the environmental pillar of the game, speed and movement. But one thing it doesn't affect though is your ability to switch weapons. Switching weapons. I know this one sounds obvious, but the ability to switch weapons at a second's notice, especially with the variety available, means combos do not need to be broken. Hence, your aggressive approach and consistent moving doesn't need to be stopped. What I'm trying to say is, Tactics can be switched on the fly such as taking the long distance approach with a sniper to instantly transitioning to a semi-automatic pistol at medium range. 
and finally getting up close and personal with a shotgun or a melee attack. But speaking about weapons, let's talk about weapons. weapons. Gameplay isn't Bethesda's forte, but that doesn't mean they don't give you a wide range of styles to consider when carrying out missions. The perfect example here is Skyrim which allows you to make different builds with different abilities and we can see the similarities here as there's a wide range of weapons and mods that will be available to the player, starting from different sights and scopes, larger magazines, different weapon types from long, mid to short range, different melee weapons with different stats and properties, thermal visions and sandstorms which means you probably have to use certain mods over others, my personal favourites, stealth mechanics. Now it hasn't been fully confirmed but there's a high chance you can make your way throughout a large portion of this game by primarily focusing on this playstyle. This can be done by avoiding enemies, crawling through vents, using non-lethal silence takedowns and if need be, using the force. I said in one of my videos that there's a chance we might get special abilities in this game and I was told that was unlikely. Fast forward to June 11th and here we are. Now this is just one ability but it's safe to say there might be others such as pull, push and time dilation. It's speculation on my part but I thought I would just throw it in there. To round this up, you play Bethesda games for the exploration and the open world, the ability to pick up any object, interact with any civilian, go anywhere you want at any place and at any time. You play for the RPG elements with the combat mechanics supplementing its core elements. You never played a Bethesda game for combat. Until now. Starfield's gameplay can be described in one word, 